Oh, hi there. Welcome to Brose. Just a couple of bros drinking rose and talking fitness. I'm Mike Garrity, the strongest comedian on earth, and I'm here with Dustin Nelson, the doctor of Chinese medicine, acupuncturist, uh, herbalist, kinesiologist, uh, strength coach. Uh, pretty nice dude. I miss anything? Yeah, I appreciate that. All right, we're good. We're here to help you sift through the cesspool of the toxic fitness industry and find the good nuggets of truth. That's what we're here for, and we're gonna help you. Um, we're gonna help you uh, help our show get popular. <laughs> that's also yeah. that's a nice benefit. <laughs> Um, so without further ado, we're going to start the show with Q&A. This is where uh, people like you send us questions, and I ask them to Dustin, and he, we get to the bottom of them together. Sometimes I mix in a few of my own and pretend like uh, one of you people are that, that unhealthy. Sound good? You ready to go? Yeah, I'm ready. Cheers. Cheers, buddy. Let's have, uh, let's have fun learning. Oh, that's nice. Was that a yes? That yeah, 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 yeah. Always okay. fun learning. That's right. the best way to have fun. Dustin, what is the maximum amount of protein that we can assimilate in one serving? Uh, I'm gonna, uh, this reminds me of something, so I'm gonna reword this for you uh, in case this is helpful, but I had a buddy that, uh, named Satman who played Juco College, and uh, every once in a while he, he would uh, just turn all the lights off in his house and just light candles and do push-ups every day and then eat two cans of tuna in his mac and cheese, because he said that's the maximum amount of protein you can absorb. So is that, so is Satman right? There you go. It's like, <laughs> is there a, there's got to be a question in there. I have comments about Satman, uh, but the question about, is that how much protein you can assimilate? Um, yes and no. There, there's, um, it really depends on the assimilation of the person. That's why we have so much importance placed on digestion and the assimilation because it's not what you eat, it's what you eat assimilate. And assimilate. Yeah. And so optimizing digestion, um, I think the general idea for people is that, and this is where a lot of that eating small meals is more beneficial. Um, but there's you know plenty of other evidence for people that support and they eat twice a day and they break their proteins up that way. So I think it's less about the caloric and protein loading um, it's more about how much you can digest and assimilate based on your constitution. And here's the thing, Mike, is that humans are weird little beings and that we, we adapt. And so if you train yourself to eat five, six times a day, you'll get hungry and you'll be used to more efficient at digesting and assimilating at that frequency. Um, if you, uh, you know, feed like a snake and you eat one time a day, um, you'll, you won't be hungry maybe throughout the day. You'll be used to only eating once. Um, and maybe you'll be better at, at digesting and assimilating that way. Uh, but I think in general, for most people, if they eat every three or four hours and have a solid amount of 30 to 50 grams of protein per meal, that's probably the best way for them to move. 30 forward. to 50 per meal is a, is a good rule of thumb without knowing the in individual's in general, uh, GI in tract. Yeah, in general. Uh, and intimately. Depends on the size, too, because if you get a little homunculus, so you get a little tiny person who only weighs 100 pounds. Then what was that thing you just said a second ago? Homunculus. It's like a perfectly formed miniature human. But the, is that a real word? Or is that something yeah, we're going to no, get canceled for? No. No, I'm okay. pretty sure that's... I'm pretty sure that's... All right. No, don't, we don't need you to look that up. We'll just move on. Uh, no, it's it's just a smaller person. And in the... It, you know, the... the, the you know, the idea here is that that's where hand signals come in really well for learning how to manage your caloric intake, because the size of your hand is per generally proportionate to the size of the human. Right. And so I eat like I've got Shaq's hands. Yeah, I do that, too, on the weekends. Um, but I'm probably better at free throws. Next question. <sighs> Hydroxy cut. Yeah. Yo, Himby. Green tea, wizard juice, MCT. Yeah. Yeah. Tell yeah. us yeah. once and for all. Yeah. These over-the-counter fat burners, which one of them actually burns fat? And don't say none. All? All? No, none of them do. Um, it's not about the... Well, listen, here's the deal. They all have... They all do multiple things. So like Yohimbi, because that's an herb we use in Chinese medicine, it's actually better adapted to driving uh, blood into the muscle. Now, think about it this way. Here's how it can work. Yohimbi may boost nitric oxide. It may actually have a benefit to testosterone levels as well, both of which can help you build muscle. 
and your your caloric uh, expenditure, the amount of calories you burn in a day's time, is built on the amount of muscle cells you have. So if you if you actually use Yohimbi to build your muscle, then theoretically it right. can't do that. So you but can it's take not going it to do if it you work day. out. Yeah. But if you don't work out, no, there's no, no, no point in taking it. Yeah. Well, there's points to taking it. It will actually help you with your blood flow. But that's the kind of thing you want to work with an herbalist. But not to, it's not going to help you burn fat if you're not working out. No, probably not. Okay. No, in fact, what about at, hydroxy cut? Mike, do you not? Huh? No. In, in fact, ephedra, which was the root in the original hydroxy cut, is not, it's, we use it in Eastern medicine to help. You know what you use it for in Eastern medicine? Asthma. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Especially with kids. I'm surprised and, I remember that. And so it got used because it can it can increase uh, it's a vasodilator, bronchodilator. So what it can what it can do is improve uh, breathing and blood flow. And so for people who are going through rigorous exercise activities, that can also be dangerous. So this is another example of how the fitness industry takes little bits of information and then they lean on one part of it and they over amplify it and it becomes not only counterproductive but in some case is dangerous. I don't recommend fat burners for anyone because the time, effort, money spent on improving your diet, optimizing the right type of training and supporting it with nutrients that, you know, dietarily that you're missing from your, with supplements that are missing from your diet are way better ways to spend All right, your money. So let's say someone's eating decently and working out regularly. Is there like a, a herb or something like that you would recommend taking just to kind of help burn a little more calories? No. There isn't a one that's Ooh, no, sounds like no shortcuts. Well, no, here's what it is here. here here's what it is. Genuinely is that there's plenty of things that would actually help expedite fat loss, but they depend on the deficiency of the individual. There isn't a one size fits all for all person. I can't say here's the nutrient for Mike and here's the nutrient for me. And here's the nutrient for all these people. We know there isn't one nutrient. You're like, that's the thing. But we all have a nutrient or two that if we added would make us better at what we're doing. And it's really just about evaluating that. That's the key. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to ask you this. You ever seen an overweight meth head? Next question. <clears throat> what are the key steps to that? <laughs> what are the key steps someone should take to stop uh, their body from producing diarrhea all the time? <laughs> okay. Can you just, this is how I picture it. I picture it like, I'll just get it all out and then whatever sack is carrying it all inside my body will be empty and I'll be fine. Yeah. Well, I think the, the purgative nature of that is whatever, that's kind of what your body's already doing is saying, whatever this foul mess is, just get it, get everybody oh. out. Um, which is also part of the reason why when you use things that help retain um, and keep all the fluid and things in, that can be uh, detrimental if what the body's trying to do is actually so purge, like, purge a uh, pathogen. Modium, Pepto, that kind of stuff? Um, uh, yeah, but corks, yeah, cork would, cork would qualify. Uh, what you want to do to help mitigate what we're talking about here is intestinal integrity. And so our intestines aren't one long tube. They're a bunch of little sections of tube that are kind of fit together, kind of like a water slide. And when we get cracks in that, it allows mm -hmm. things to seep through and then allows other things to come in. And that creates inflammation. And that's what in general we're responding to in the intestinal tract. For most people, it's just... In, inflammation in the guts yeah if and it's so, not like a uh, stomach flu or virus yeah yeah yeah, or, yeah. Or, in, in which case a pathogen's causing it right. but if it's structural then what you're looking at here is to reduce the protagonist so you want to reduce what's causing it and then you want to use something that's going to help reduce the inflammation in the area which often includes using you know guided uh, medicinals that can reduce inflammation like zinc carnosine and aloe vera and uh, licorice all these types of th glutamine, these types of things. And then you want to modulate your lifestyle so that you stop causing the inflammation in the first place. So when you're hung over and you got butt pee, it's probably because the alcohol made your intestines inflamed. Probably. And of often in those cases, it's probably beer. But it's the inflammation. Right? Yeah. But there's certain things yeah. that cause that will, act, will, will create more of an intestinal per, uh, irritation than others. I think learning, um, uh, medicine is super easy. Like, for example, now I know that. <laughs> Next question. Uh, word on the street is ibuprofen is bad for your stomach and liver. What say you? That's good. Sorry, I pointed at you. It's I know okay. you oh, like gosh. You're, yeah, it's okay. I get it. I'm, I'm, uh, I, mean, I agree. It is. Ibuprofen is bad for your stomach and liver. It's, 
if you consider, yeah, yes. Moving on. There's a follow-up question, which would be, let me ask the question that you also want to ask, which is, should I take it? And the answer is, if you, if you know that and you're like, I'm just in a lot of pain and I need something to help me, it's the cost benefit might right. very much be worth it. Fevers. What, yeah, there's certain situations where you're like, hey, I know what this is doing, but I'm going to choose to take this because I, I want it to be palliative. I want to be comfortable. Right. Uh, that's different so like than- a, a little bit's fine. Yeah, the, the difference is looking at why it's- So if you have chronic pain and you're not dealing with anything to, or to get to the root of the issue and you're taking it because of that, then maybe sort yourself out mentally, emotionally, physically, and don't rely on the, the painkiller. But yes, it does- I got, I got some something issues. to tell you. That happened to me. I wish I remembered this guy's full first name and last name because I would put you on blast in the whole world right We're now. Glad I had an assistant don't. baseball coach tell me when I was in high school, if your arm is sore, to wake up in the morning, take 10 to 15 ibuprofen, and then before the game, take five more to activate all the other ibuprofen in your body. Activate oh. them? Yeah. Yeah. That, that guy, there's probably a lot of reasons he shouldn't have been around children. But that's <laughs> the end of that segment because let's move on. So, Dustin, I'm going to ask you for help. Um, and because asking for help is hard, I'm gonna tell you two truths and a lie and then you, you figure out how to help me, okay? One, I eat a pound of broccoli every day. A pound of broccoli. Two, I eat a bowl of raisin bran every day. Three, I do coffee enemas because a guy once told me that Janet Jackson does them. I, I hope that the Janet Jackson enema is the lie. The thing about being friends with me, folks, is it's hard to tell sometimes. Yeah, I mean, I'm aware. All right, that is the lie. It is the lie. Yeah. All right. <laughs> yeah, I've never done that. Uh, but you um, eat a pound of broccoli. That's before I found out about iced coffee. Yes, I do <laughs> eat a pound of broccoli yeah. every day. And you do the raisin. So you're trying to get fiber up in your diet? Yeah, I'm trying to increase fiber. To, to give your your, yeah. your stools more. I know more. raisin bran's not like, there's sugar and stuff in it, but it's so delicious and it's got fiber that's in it. That's the reason. So. Me, that's, so well, hold on a minute. And this is good. The co Listen, there's nothing wrong with a coffee enema. You might want to work with a qualified professional. <laughs> something tells me you just pour a pot of coffee up there or something. No, oh, you just made me almost choked because of the timing of that. Let's forget about me for a second. No, no, no. <laughs> we're going to keep working. No, we're not going to forget about Nothing wrong with a coffee enema? No, no. Coffee enemas are great. Uh, when I done do properly. Yeah, well, there's nothing wrong with doing that. And yes, maybe you should explore that. But also, I would not recommend doing it yourself at home. So okay. we'll just... We'll, we'll, deal with that later, but the, the, the you touched on something that's interesting and I want to make sure that you hear this because there is a benefit to this. The broccoli thing is just A plus awesome banger. That's great. Nutritionally, in terms of your fiber content, in terms of you know being nature's broom and giving some some sustenance to your stool, that's all great. The the raisin bran uh, you oh. talked about eating it because it's so delicious. That's the exact reason to eat it. There's actually not a lot of nutritional value in those cereals. But it doesn't that have uh, fiber? Not, I mean a bit, but that's not what you do them. You're gonna be much further ahead if you would just add a little bit more to your broccoli than ever by eating the, the raisin bran bit. So as it turns out, the thing that you actually had is the lie, the coffee enema and the broccoli would probably be the two things I'd say to, to do moving forward. The raisin bran is probably the stuff you could ditch. But again, bring back to this, there's a recurring theme. You notice it, Mike, which is, once the marketing gets its hands on the fitness industry, that's when things get weird and wonky and people start developing the habits that they're like, I thought this was great. And it's just, unfortunately, for most people, they don't need to do that. So Why broccoli, is raisin bran not great for getting fiber? It's, you're going to get more fiber at a cheaper price with more nutrients in broccoli than the raisin bran. Right. And, and, and if what you want to do is move stuff out, do a coffee enema. Those are great. Well, I'm thinking about now that I know this, doing a raisin bran enema. And that brings us to lightning round. This is where I ask Dustin as many questions as I can. We cram it into a short period of time because we want to get as much information to you as possible. And these uh, are also conveniently edited well into <laughs> social media. Uh, first question. <clears throat> Remember, Dustin, this is a speed round. Is beer a suitable pre or post workout beverage? No. No, easy answer. Um, Let's go back to that as why someone thought it huh? was. We need. Well, we're... we'll get to that when it's not a lightning round, Dustin. Okay. Uh, you just lost a point. <laughs> Bing. Do you know a pressure point that will make me poop? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Awesome. Next question Why are vegan milkshakes so delicious? No clue. Really? 
No. Okay. Well, they are. Probably so sugar. The answer is they are. Uh, should I sleep in a hyperbaric chamber like Gronk does? Uh, yeah. I don't... That's all I need to know. I'm buying one. What's the coolest thing you can do to someone with acupuncture? Like, what's the coolest thing you can do to someone with acupuncture? You don't remember it? Huh? Uh-oh. <laughs> that's a, and that's brosé, folks. <laughs> Thanks for watching. We're just a couple of bros drinking rosé and talking fitness. I've been Mikey G. That's Dr. D. And we'll see you next time. And don't forget, get your bros spayed and neutered. Can you really make me poop with your finger? Yeah. Or a needle. Yeah. I got an idea. <laughs>